Holla ballers and a bro fist to you all. Welcome back to the second stream of today as we are about to step into the madness. We are stepping face first into there as we have got a hell, a hell of a week lined up. Certainly next week. My God, my God. Post drama time today, we will be sitting down with none other than Scribe himself <clears throat> to begin negotiations. Negotiations. Which will decide the fate of an event taking place on Tuesday, where we will decide the rules of engagement, as Echo will go one-on-one -on -one with Team PG. And in negotiations, we will decide the rules, the forfeits that may come from such an event, as we go one-on-one -on -one to decide who is the best at defeating rats. Yes, we will be stepping toe-to-toe -to -toe with musical Rat Jam. I have no doubt they're putting their best foot, best foot forward. Likely to see Scribe, Roger Brown. We do know Jeeth is, of course, signed up for this war. But we will be going in in the brand new Criterion Dungeon in FF14, one-on-one. -on -one. It will be a battle to the death. And hopefully the servers will be up on time in order to make it work. It's going to be a good time. And that is happening after drama time. We will begin that discussion. But that's not why you're here right now. You're here right now have some fun chill back relaxing things and then after we have negotiations with mr scribe himself we will be going into the mega dungeon the second half of the mega dungeon which we began on wednesday thursday i'm not sure <laughs> wednesday i think maybe yesterday uh in order to figure out if we could defeat part two of that dungeon as we've been pushing through it blind Nobody knew what was inside, besides Noble. He had seen some stuff on the PTR. Uh, and very, very, very woefully undergeared, bringing along a good lady Zeppler with us as well, who only capped this week. <laughs> and currently has a 398 character that also appears to be wearing one single trinket. I'm sure that's not the case. We will clear that up with her when we get there. Uh, so it will be good. <clears throat> is Jordan part of the team? Jordan is not on the team. Because it would be spoilers for her. And we don't spoil FF14 content. It is sacred. It is the sacred content that must not be disturbed. That is the rules of engagement. We must wait patiently until uh, our good Jordan can take part. Uh, trial by fire. Yes, Zeppler proved and turned out to be one of the best gamers uh, that I could have ever hoped to play with. She's awesome. She's amazing. She went from not playing that character at all or healing or anything to healing a severely undergeared team in very brutal circumstances a good 50 item levels below where she should be thumbs up <laughs> thumbs up for zeppler she got in there and got some work done uh, i have got several stories in front of me to share with you on this fine friday afternoon and uh Be bex recommends nearly all of them in fact she had a cheeky grin and a tongue sticking out in the emojis that she sent me along with this uh so let's have some fun let's kick back let's relax before we start getting stressed uh as the this one is titled as the wow as the world of warcraft turns as the world of warcraft turns okay and we have four of our wonderful supporters who will be members of this uh story for us we have ender gamma ender gamma angel wing blind hopes Ah, Mr. Nate, that's on me. And Yerba will be the stars of our tale for today. They shall be our stars for story number one today. It's going to be good. <clears throat> no sadness today. I don't know. That's the whole point. I am along for this ride um, as much as you guys are. I don't know what's in here. Um, wholesome, maybe. Terrifying, potentially. Fun, sure, maybe. <laughs> we'll find out. Let's get into it. Let's have some fun. Hello, Preacher! And your excessively attractive and lovely scented chat. This only makes me raise the hammer because you are buttering them up and that is never a good sign. Today I come to you from the land where ignorance is a virtue and unlimited guns reign supreme. That's right, I am from Dat Usa. We are from somewhere in the massive land that is USA. Okay, so yeah, maybe Florida. Texas, maybe. A lot of guns there, from what I'm told. Guns everywhere. I don't know. Everybody wants to believe they are, of course, the main character in their own story. I believed this myself, and for most of my life, until I met Endergamma. 
Let me take you wonderful people to early 2020. The latter half of Battle for Azeroth, I believe, and the first wave of shutdowns and isolation from COVID pandemic. Without ability to go out and see my friends, I find myself submerging my soul into WoW around that time. I was doing some RBGs with one of them on one afternoon, and I joined an RBG group that had their own Discord server. Now, the leader of this RBG group was a crude, somewhat abrasive person whose voice can only be described as a sling blade. He told us his name was Ender Gamma and that we were going to, in his words, pwn, P-W-N, these alliance fucks. And it was important that we teabag or clam slam every corpse of theirs. If nothing else, I found it, I appreciated the gender neutral threats. <laughs> teabag, clam slam, whatever you want to do. It's entirely up to you. <laughs> I don't judge whatever's between your legs just make sure you smash it right into their face after you reduce their bodies to a bloody corpse <clears throat> over the course of the matches that afternoon i found him to be surprisingly friendly and oddly quite charming despite his rough nature he offered to help me get better at pvp we exchanged did you fall in love with the clam slammer <laughs> please tell me you didn't fall in love with the clam slammer just the way he said it, you know, it was, it was the sultry way he said clam slam that really drove me wild. It was something else. It was really quite fantastic. He offered to help me get better at PvP. We swapped battle tags and made plans to PvP again later that week. It is with much shame <laughs> that I admit that in the beginning, I did not want a friendship with Ender Gamma. And I just wanted to use and abuse him as a means of reaching my PvP goals. I treated him like a number scratched into the door of the bathroom stall that said, Call for that PvP. Over the next couple of days, we grew closer as friends. And to this day, I consider him a solid comrade in arms. Obviously, I was now part of a Discord group. New friends, new people to meet, wonderful times to be had. I also met several awesome people through Endergamma, one of which was a lovely Canadian lady named Angel... Oh, there it is. <laughs> named Angel Wing. Me, Endergamma, and Angel Wing made a threesome. We made a PvP threes team and fast friends. Endergamma is what some of you would probably describe as aggressively open about his personal life. Oh, Jesus Christ. During the first few weeks of Endergamma, Angel Wing and I rocking that three-way, Endergamma told us a lot about how unhappy he was with his girlfriend of five years, Blind Hopes. He told us that Blind Hopes had been pretty absent in his life for a very long time. She would disappear IRL for weeks at a time and then come back when she needed money or to borrow his truck. Girlfriend, eh? That's, that's, that's not a girlfriend. That's not what that is. That's not a girlfriend. <laughs> that's, that's just, that's like Jenny from Forrest Gump, right? That's, you're getting gumped, dude. You're getting seriously gumped. That's what's happening there. You're getting giga gumped. You don't want to get gumped. At least my wife does all those things, but she stays every night, so that's good news. We felt very bad for Endergamma. But he didn't want to leave her. Because she had a son. It doesn't say they had a son. It says she had a son. Endergamma said that he had committed to being a father figure for that child. So, you want the child to grow up thinking that it's okay for mummy to just disappear until she needs money? That kind of father figure? I'm not judging, but like, that's not a good lesson for the kid. <laughs> that's not a good lesson for the kid. I don't like that at all. <laughs> I don't like that one little bit. Does she leave the kid with you? I don't know. I wonder if it says. Does he? Does she just disappear and leave the kid with you? Is that what happens? 
I'm kind of curious. Getting back to it, we did a couple of weeks of threes. I log in one night and I get a message from Endergammer in the pink. Mate, we need to talk. I log into Discord to find a somewhat drunk Endergammer needing advice. Mate, excuse me, mate, excuse me, but I need to let you know. I think I have feelings for Angel Wing and that. This was how he started the, comp uh, the conversation. Being fairly sure that Angel Wing does not feel that way towards the Clam Slammer. <laughs> and Endergammer still having a real life girlfriend, but also wanting to be as gentle as possible, I ask him the following questions. <clears throat> are you okay with a long distance relationship with Angel Wing? And are you willing to move to Canada with the moose and the syrup? No. <laughs> What's his reply? No, I'm not. <laughs> okay. So I told him if he was going to tell her he had feelings for her, he was basically asking her to pick up her job and her three children and move to a rural New York state, and that was probably not a good thing to do. He agreed, and we decided to go and do some PvP. Well, at least it was a bro talk, right? The next day, though, I log on and another message in the pink. Mate, mate, excuse me. Excuse me, mate. We need to talk. Tell you what I did, mate. I was drunk last night, right? So a fucking angel wing rocks up, don't she? Sounding all fine on Discord. Fucking beautiful, like an angel's queef. And I told her, excuse me, angel wing. Just letting you know, I've got feelings for you. <clears throat> now I was unsure how this conversation might have gone but being a savvy Canadian lady who had the life experience of having three children she basically told him the exact same thing I had said that it wasn't even worth considering and to basically shut the fuck up so they could just be friends and do some PvP together she did not play with us at all for two weeks <laughs> I tell you what I'm going to do I'm just going to take a little break. Thank you very much for playing. I'm going to take a little break. When I whispered her, she said it was to let the awkwardness settle. But then when she did come back, she never mentioned a thing and pretended like it never happened. I like I like this lady. She's good. I like this lady. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to disappear for two weeks and then I'm going to come back and we'll just forget this entire situation ever occurred. Good shit. A couple more weeks later, though, of Endergamma trying his best to teach Angel Wing and I to go and do PvP, Endergamma was remarkably patient with us, considering how fucking terrible we were. I log in after work, as per usual, the fucking second the game loaded. Like, the second the game loaded. Mate, excuse me, though. We need to talk again. Now, this is the many times I have received the same whisper in the pink. So I'm assuming, of course, it's either something to do with Blind Hopes' girlfriend or maybe Angel Wing. So I log on to Discord to see what's up. Oh, mate, mate, you is never going to believe what's happened. Fucking, I tell you what, mate. I tell you what, I got some blood flowing down below. You know what I mean? I is in love. Me and my friend Yerba, right? We got drunk last night. And we told each other we are madly in love. And we have been fucking, like, in love with each other for mad time. For time, mate. My first question, of course, was who the fuck is Yerba? I have never heard the name Yerba mentioned one single time. And Endergamma was still with his girlfriend. He then told me he had known Yerba through World of Warcraft for almost 10 years. And... She was married, had two children, and was still with her husband. And that in their one drunken conversation, that she was prepared to leave her husband to join Endergamma. What the fuck was going through my brain at this moment? I talked to them for most of the night while we PvP'd, trying to get some details on the situation. He was like a kid 
that had discovered love for the very first time, telling me he had never felt this way before, and he truly knew what being somebody's soulmate was like now. He told me that Yerba and her husband were both unemployed, living on government assistance, and that her husband had turned to meth. Okay. <clears throat> okay. And the gamer assured me that after this conversation and the soulmate that he had found in Yerba, he was more than prepared to leave his girlfriend blind hopes. To join Yerba in paradise. What could I say? It seemed like a fucking shit show, a spaghetti mess fiesta, but they're adults and could do whatever they want. And at the end of the day, I'm really just here to PvP, bro. Like, I cannot stress that enough that you keep telling me all these things. But when I finish work and I click that login button, I'm really here to play video games. That's... <laughs> there's, there's not much else to it other than I'm here to, like, do some PvP in World of Warcraft and kind of go to bed. That's kind of where my head's at. But being a friend, which I now was, I told Endergammer in many different ways to take it slow be safe and really consider what you're doing before making a rash decision the next day endergamma told me he broke up with blind hopes to be with yerba well okay then <laughs> there we go over the next few weeks i of course got to hear regaling tales about how great things were going with him and yerba how they would talk on the phone they were doing video chats have phone sex and send each other dirty little messages. Sadly, though, as time wants to do, it passed. And the shine of this new relationship elation started to wear off. Apparently, the grass was not always greener. And Endergamma would start having more and more complaints. Even though Endergamma had done his part of the bargain <laughs> and... Had broken up with his girlfriend. Yeah, but not so much. She had not left her husband. And she had not left her children or brought her children anywhere. She was just sat at home. <laughs> sending dirty ass messages. <laughs> Edna Gamba then told me that all the calls... And video chats he had been having with Yerba... Including sending each other nudes were being done through her mother's phone so that her husband wouldn't discover it. Awesome. That's well good. <laughs> That's awesome. I hope mommy got to see you with your dirty cock out. Oh, yeah. Mommy loves it. Mommy needs some sugar, baby. Mommy needs some sugar. Sure, Yerba. Here, use my phone again. <laughs> Yerba's husband had no idea Endergammer even existed more than a month into their relationship after they had committed. And uh, Endergammer was getting upset that the woman, his soulmate above all else, the one he was madly in love with, that he had changed his life for, was still sleeping with another man every single night. It gets weirder. Yerba said she had told her mother about Endergamma, and her mother was supportive with her leaving her husband for him. She wanted her daughter to be with a better person, and even though she only knew Endergamma through the internet, it must be better than the current meth addict. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I guess so, right? <laughs> if those are apparently your two choices... If, apparently you've got yourself in a situation where these are your choices on the one hand you've got a stranger who lives somewhere else through a mother's phone and you've got the meth addict ipso facto i don't know <clears throat> there it is because yerba was using her mom's phone to talk to endergamma on most of these occasions endergamma was able to connect with yerba's mama as he had to call that phone to get hold of your... Oh my god. You call her mother to have phone sex with her daughter. This is some hillbilly redneck shit. Right? I'm just letting you know. This is some, this is some real redneck shit. 
That's what this is. is... <laughs> this is so... Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think you guys are two steps from sleeping with goats or something. I really do. Okay. <clears throat> Sometimes Yerba wasn't there. So Endergamma and Yerba's mom talked several times to figure out a way to motivate her daughter to leave her husband and move her and her two kids away to live with Endergamma. You sit and talk with her mother about leaving her husband. <laughs> and all the while, our author here just wants to do some PvP. That's all he wants. He wants some rating. Yeah, he wants some resilience. He wants some fucking PvP score. That's all he wants. <laughs> Yerba... No, not Yerba. Endergamma and Yerba's mother decided that they should give her a time frame. And that would be the best motivator. Okay, sure. <clears throat> Endergamma decided that the only logical deadline to give Yerba to tell her husband she was leaving and moving with the kids to live with her Warcraft boyfriend was... The following Tuesday. Based on the WoW weekly reset. Holy shit. I am fucking speechless. I am fucking speechless. <clears throat> You're reading that right, Mike. He gave her until the WoW reset. So she couldn't misunderstand the time. I feel like we're not dealing with the sharpest knives. <laughs> I, did, I did not hear from Edgama the next Tuesday. I was kind of like, as I imagine you guys are, dying to know what happened. Oh, I'm in now. <laughs> Oh, boys. Oh, fuck. Okay, I'm in. I'm in. All right, Tuesday. Let's do it. I'm opening my vault. I need the news. Tell me what's going on. The Thursday of that week, I got a message in the pink. Mate, 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 we need to talk. You're goddamn right we do, I thought. I dived onto Discord so fast, and I hear him and a friend of his laughing their asses off. I'm beyond confused, but eager to hear the news. Endergamma tells me he has great news and bad news. Okay. The good news is that Yerba has kicked her husband out of the house and is fully ready to start the process of making the move to New York with her kids to live with Endergamma. The bad news is the reason for this is that Yerba had found out that her husband had been fucking her mother. Oh, that makes so much sense as well. That totally makes sense. I hate how much that jigsaw piece fits. I fucking hate how much that jigsaw piece fits. That's exactly why the mum was totally okay with it. Oh my god. Jesus Christ. <clears throat> the same mother that had been conspiring with Endergamma to break up her marriage for weeks, apparently when Yerba and her husband would get into fights, she would kick him out for the night, and the only place he could go that was local was to her mother's, where they ended up having sex. It got to the point that most of Yerba's troubles were because he was intentionally starting arguments to get kicked out so he could go and have sex with her mother. Hey, he might be a meth addict, but at least he's got a fucking strat, right? My boy's got strats. That's huge brain. That's huge brain. He's got fucking plays. <laughs> he's got 300 IQ play. Oh, man. Yeehaw, motherfuckers. <laughs> Yeehaw. During this conversation... We were all, of course, losing our fucking minds. This was unbelievable. We were laughing so hard we were getting headaches. Endergamma mentions that the husband also has a small dick. <laughs> Apparently it's fine for mommy. The other fellow at Discord and myself immediately stop and ask, why do you know the size of her husband's dick? 
It turns out that Yerba and her husband had videos on Pornhub as a way of getting meth. This is unreal. One link. One link. I need a link. I need a fuck. I, I mean, I don't want to watch any porn, but I need a link. I need to see this shit. Yerba, for God knows what reason, other than apparently shaming her husband's stunted salami, shared her pawn with Endergamma. And you still want to be with this woman after she sends you her pawn with her husband. <laughs> 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 Try it out. There's no link in the story. I'm actually depressed. There's no link. Oh, God. Uh, okay. Of course, Endergamma shares us with shares us the links. Oh, bro, what are you doing? You had the link? Uh, we, of course, all reviewed the tapes. Judge's decision? It was an odd-shaped wiener. <laughs> the the, la the laughter of the night started to come to an end. Endergamma was super happy that things were moving forward with the woman he loved. God bless you. God bless you. I tried to bleach my brain for the fact I had seen the woman he loved getting, getting some in a cheap motel. They also role-played in the videos, which made it extra fun. Oh, Jesus Christ. I bet she chose that as well because she thought that was one of the better performances of her, right? Consider for a moment you're not a normal human being. Try and put yourself in the mindset of someone who is in this situation. And you're about to send your pornography to the person you have yet to meet in order to, you know, sway them and make them laugh. And you must then go through the selections to find the good ones, right? That you think is the best. <clears throat> hmm. After a month or so, Angel Wing, who was still doing arenas with us, and myself told him that she might be having second thoughts. Oh, she's still not moved. He did not want to believe it for a while, but became more and more frustrated every day with the lack of move. God, I need to close my window. Sorry. Russell. I believe a thunderstorm is coming. So she still hasn't moved. Okay. Yerba's estranged husband, shockingly, was staying with her mother while kicked out. It was around this time that Yerba's husband had apparently grown tired of being with mummy as it was no longer interesting and was allowed to move back in, back in with Yerba to try and mend the relationship. Wow. Endergamma did not take this well, but believed her when she said nothing was going on. She was still his soulmate and still wanted to make the move. The husband now knew about Endergamma, of course, and was being as was jealous of him. Endergamma had a habit of talking on speakerphone about very personal things while still being in Discord and an open mic. We would listen, obviously. <laughs> there was one awkward night that stands out where Endergamma was on the phone with Yerba and she had locked herself in her car in her driveway to make the phone call away from her husband. As we listened, her husband was standing on the lawn next to the car screaming at her. We could all hear everything. Weeks went by with no real commitment on Yerba's part to make the big move. But she continued to tell Endergamma that she was still very serious about the whole thing. Angel Wing, a few other friends of myself, had long since been telling Endergamma to please fucking put this to bed. Put a bullet in it. It's long dead. Leave it alone and move on. It was around this time that Endergamma's brother started to have issues with his fiance. Oh my god, are you for fucking real? Vulgate. I don't have that name, Bex. I'm going to throw it in here. There's another character. <laughs> There's another character. <laughs> it just doesn't get We need a flowchart. 
<laughs> There's another character involved. Okay, here we go. <laughs> and the government becomes sort of a mediator for both of them. And of course told us all about the issues that that couple was going through too. It was around October 2020. And I think that Endergamma decided he had had enough and gave Yerba another deadline. She had to pick a date, contact a moving company, and book a flight so Endergamma could pay for all of it, and therefore it was all real. Okay. Ever the diehard World of Warcraft player, <laughs> to make it easier for her, <coughs> he set the deadline for the following WoW weekly reset. By the next Tuesday, Yerba had in fact chosen a day to move, found a flight for Endergamma to pay for, and he was so, so happy. And we were all happy that this might be coming to an end. The weight, the tension, the tails, it was going to happen. The flight was set for a month-ish into the future, late November, early December-ish. The next couple of weeks now this had been sorted were chill. We just played played together. Not too much drama on Endergamma's end. It was about a week before the big day when I logged in after work and it had happened again. A message in the pink. Mate. Use me, mate. Can I have a word with you, mate? I got into Discord and Endergamma told me about a Facebook post. From Yerba. Facts. Like. <laughs> the Facebook post read. We're adding another member to our family. The husband tax. Lots of frilly fonts and love emojis. <clears throat> Endergamma was devastated. <laughs> I think this was the th this is the moment. This is the moment that it finally hit home. That she was just jerking him around as she jerked her husband's meat and of course had no intention of moving. He spent the next day desperately trying to call her and got more of the same. I love you. I want to move, but I can't right now. We are still living with and being obviously fucking her husband. I can understand not being happy in a relationship and not having an easy way out, but I just wish my boy, my boy Endergamma, would just not get so invested in her and strung along for so many months. Endergamma's brother and his fiance Vulgate had also recently broke up. Vulgate found out that she had been cheating on her with multiple women for a long time. Uh, so that was that. She was pregnant with Endergamma's nephew at that point, and Endergamma was there for her during the fallout. This Endergamma guy, man. This Endergamma guy needs a fucking friend, like a real friend in real the real real world, Jesus Christ. In order to take care of her and the baby, Endergamma started to date her so she had someone reliable in her life. You can't date your brother's ex who's Pregnant with his child. I am happy to tell you, Mike. They've been in a relationship and living together in Endergamma's apartment ever since there. <laughs> they, they, they made it work. This was not the end of the drama. Not by a long shot. But I told Endergamma I was writing this story. And he said he wanted me to stop the story when him and Vulgate got together. Bro. Are you two here right now? We need more. Fuck you. You have no privacy. We need to know. You can't just dip us out there. You just started fucking your brother's girl. We need to know. You can't cook us there. <clears throat> After you read it, if I get the go-ahead from both of them and you enjoy this one, I will continue the tales of Endergamma's adventures. This story has been read and approved by both Endergamma and Vulgate. Are you for fucking real? They okayed this? Bro, you were going to fucking move in with a lady and her children who sent you porn of her fucking her husband? 
that was like not the the red line that wasn't the, the line to cross there at that point he was staying with a guy who'd been fucking her husband her mother <laughs> that's not the line and you didn't share the link outrageous just outrageous <clears throat> Thank you, Preacher. I'm alongside finding your content. I cannot tell you how many work days your shows have got me through. A meteoric bro fist to you and all your audience. You're all wonderful. Have a grey day. Goat slippy sloppy bussing. No cap. Genitalia. For real, for real, for real. What is going on in America? What are you guys doing over there? Can you get your fucking shit together? Can you get your shit together? Right? It's not all of us. Yeah, but it's some of you. And you've got to take accountability for... Neighbor looks after neighbor, right? Make sure it's... it's They need hobbies. They're playing. Wow. Maybe this is something to do with PvP. I don't know. I don't... Zayu's just got his girl pregnant. Maybe it's all going on. I don't know, man. I don't know. Suspect. Okay. Oh. We have a reply. We ha Mike, we have a reply from a guy who stole a friend's account and is not happy we found him guilty. Are these the guys who, ha who stole that account from the guy who clearly had issues and chased them with a knife? You bullied the fuck out of that guy. Okay, right. Yeah, all right. You, uh, they, they want a defense. All right, they're going to mount a defense. Sure. Sure. You're going to mount a defense, are you? Well, the courtroom is here. This was a, like a guy who was running around in fucking Spider-Man pajamas or something. Yeah, I mean, the guilty hammers are out, but apparently we're in the wrong. All right. Maybe it was the way it was worded. Who knows? Ah, 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 ah. All right, ladies and gentlemen of the courts, they have an appeal. They have appealed to the courts. Dear Mike. Oh, it's not Preacher anymore, is it? Not the wonderful super audience who smells lovely and all that. Stolen. Oh, God. You could, you could live with it. There you go. All fixed. <laughs> Dear Mike, as predicted. <laughs> This is the follow-up to the story I submitted about the stolen account of the Spider-Man suit-wearing bread-eater called Davy. Firstly, Gravity Breeze has nothing to do with the stolen account. He's my bro and he is fully innocent. It probably came out like that since my writing was sloppy and I didn't read it from top to bottom to see if I missed something. Okay. Secondly, I took note of what you said at the start of Drama Time and I did start watching drama from the beginning. And there are some really good stories and some are just bis, like Brojo. And yes, if you want to be YouTube streamer, you really shouldn't care what equipment you have. Just start. That's a Oh, because you wanted to leave the game or something, right? I started hiding my Minecraft channel when I was 10, and I'm glad I stopped with it. Okay. We play in the reading room of the library. <laughs> and as you can imagine, there were not that many people that used this room for reading. The computers were in a different room from where all the books were and where the library staff worked. So they didn't really care about us. Just that we stayed on the computers for no more than the one hour we'd paid for. We obviously stayed longer whenever we could. Let me get to the main story. It might come across here that I am washing my hands of this. But believe it if you want. I had nothing to do with the stealing of the account. Throughout this entire story, I was just an observer. I really didn't give a shit about Davy, and I mean really. And no, we got that part. <laughs> that, that's the part we understood. <laughs> we, we understood that. And the guy that actually stole Davy's account, Hansen, looking bad at it, was kind of manipulative and kind of a dick. He really likes throwing people under the bus for his own amusement. I can recall one time when Hansen tried to break the friendship between me and Zorath. <clears throat> Zorath was a close friend of mine, and we talked a lot. But one day, he just became aggressive and mean towards me. After two weeks of this behavior, I got annoyed with Zorath and screamed at him to tell me what the fuck is going on. Because I tried to talk with him normally and he didn't say anything. And it turned out that Hansen told Zorath that I thought he was stupid and I really didn't like him and that I used him for something. 
I can't recall what was the reason, but it was something lined off. Handsome was one of the popular kinds in my school. So a lot of people wanted to be his friend from time to time. When he was bored, he just did things like what I said before. And it's probably why he stole Davy's account. Just for his own amusement. Also, he was the guy that brought Davy to my house and told him that I stole the account, not him. And if you can recall when I said that Hansen stole the account, Hansen came behind the corner laughing when no one else laughed. He was the guy that made the photo montage of sad Davy photos when he didn't have his account. Retcon. <laughs> and the whole time this story was unfolding, he was pretty happy and was laughing the whole time when he saw Davy and enjoyed his pain. Again, I know this is looking like I'm washing my hands of this whole thing, but I had nothing to do with the stealing of the account. And again, I'm repeating myself. I don't give a shit about Davy. He was just annoying. Hanson also bullied uh, Gravity for being fat. Not like we didn't bully. <laughs> not like we all didn't bully him. But now Gravity is not fat anymore. He and is like Batka, a stereotypical boy in Bulgaria, ranging from the ages of 30 to 30, in some cases to 45, with a BMW, and he's now kind of a cool dude. This is what fat boy looks like now. <laughs> this is what fat boy looks like now. <laughs> so there we go. We know what fat boy kind of looks like. Okay. Uh, fat boy looks like uh, your stereotypical gym bro with uh, big big tattoos on. In conclusion, if you believe me or not, I don't care. Even though I prefer not being guilty. Anyway, hope on a great weekend and a smile. Well, that... Um, I don't think that changed anything. We're still declaring you guilty. Yep, hundred percent. A hundred percent. We still get that. <laughs> you were still a part of it. Let's put it that way. You were still a part of it. Right before our meeting with Scripe. In fact, Scripe's just messaged me. What did he say? Oh, Scripe is ditched. Boo! Boo! Scripe is ditched. Sorry, bro. I fully forgot about this. I've been high key pushing and it got me very excited to play WoW. Let's talk tomorrow before stream. That's why we cover the logo. Yeah. Drama time going live. That gives us time for one more story, though. Let's do that before we jump into our mega dungeon shenanigans that we're doing tonight. I can see a novel has arrived in the chat. Game face on. No one gets left behind. Oh my god, are we carrying an absolute dog turd player? That'll happen. Okay. Yeah, negotiations with Echo are tomorrow now. <sighs> we will get that. Scripe forfeits TPG wins. <laughs> okay. Let's have one more story before we go into our mega dungeon. Alu preacher in the chat. Hearing about some Guild Wars stories. Oh, we're over in Guild Wars for a second. Uh, and a few drama times ago, inspired me to tell you my tale as an officer in a tiny, what I call, teaching guild. Fuck that. It's a tale about toxic positivity, fear, and manipulation. Oh, Jesus Christ. Toxic, toxic positivity. <laughs> Let me set you a little primer. Our guild is a small raid training guild with a mission to create players that are pug ready. Meaning after our training, the members of our guild can go out into the wild world of pug raiding and hold their own. A noble effort, to be sure. On top of that, we have a policy that we do not turn anyone away from our training. If they simply sign up to take part, we let them in, no matter their experience level. No matter their gear, no matter their build. Anyone is welcome to join. And in caps lock at the top of our Discord, it says, No one gets left behind. Okay. <laughs> you, there are unfixable players, unfortunately. <laughs> oh no. Enter Dragonin. Dragonin is a newly dinged level 80. who just loves playing Ranger. Dragonin isn't the sharpest knife on the rack. To demonstrate this, one time in guild chat, we found out that Dragonin, which was both his account handle and his character name, is his real life name. To be fair, I thought Roger Brown was his real name. 
<laughs> when I first saw Roger Brown join the guild, I was like, if your name's fucking Roger Brown, why would you call your character Roger Brown? It's not. Wait a minute. <laughs> I was like, why would you call yourself fucking, why would you not think of something better than jo Roger Brown? <clears throat> he confirmed this fact when I, P I DM'd him if he was actually from X city and Y country. And I shit you not, he said, yes. Oh my God, how do you know? All in all, Dragonlord is an all right dude. He never started fights, said hi when I came across him in the open world, always signed up for the training sessions. The problem was, Dragonon was an unteachable piece of shit. You see, and if any fellow Guild Wars veterans are here, I am sorry for the cringe. Dragonon was playing... Okay, I need the Guild Wars people to educate me on this because I have never heard of this build in my entire life. Dragonon was playing a custom... Celestial Condition DPS Druid. Give me a scale of how tragic that is. Oof. <laughs> oof. Is this an oof? <laughs> oh no. Okay. To us that aren't familiar, I am not... I've done a lot in Guild Wars 2, but I'm not familiar with all the classes and specs. That's, uh... It's pretty oof. Okay. It's pretty oof. Okay. <clears throat> For those of you who don't know, it's absolutely goddamn awful. With little or no unity or cohesion with the group. But our guild must adhere to policy. No one gets left behind. So, we drag Dragonon through the first two bosses of Wing 7. While he's doing as much damage as the healers. At one point, another officer asked me in squad chat if I had accidentally assigned three healers. I DM'd him. <laughs> that Dragonon is a new. And he's playing condition dps druid with celestial gear and i'm sorry but the rules say we can't leave him behind the first two bosses of wing seven took us four hours <laughs> now that i do know about <laughs> that's a big oof <laughs> uh, that's a big oof uh, <laughs> yeah that's a big oof <laughs> We decided, and that's not even doing it blind. Oof, uh, okay. We decided to call it a night. I asked, uh, I, for WoW players, let's say, that's like, that's one of your six hour Mythic Plus runs. No levers. That's, that's a commitment. <laughs> that's, that's a commitment. That's like a six hour M Plus run. That's, that's a bad place to be. You don't want to be there. <laughs> you don't want to be there. Oh, God. We decided to stop the raid after that. I asked another officer who's more familiar with Ranger to help Dragonon out with his build. I would have done it myself, but I wasn't familiar with the class. After a few days, this officer told us in our officer-only Discord channel that Dragonon is going to play Untamed now instead of Druid. For those who don't know, Untamed is even harder to play than the Druid class. But at least it isn't real DPS spec. This did not help his performance. He absolutely refused to change his gear because he had already cost him a lot of gold and he chose Celestial so he could be a jack of all trades, master of none stat combination. What is Celestial gear? Is it that dog shit set that has like 10 of every stat? It is, right? Yeah. So, yeah, okay. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, it's like a warrior wearing in... Like, instead of it being strength gear, it's in, agi, stam, <laughs> ace, crit, mastery, verse. <sighs> Mana regen. Oh, <laughs> it's got it all on. <laughs> well, you can respect a paladin if you want to. <laughs> Wildcard build, baby. <laughs> Now, veterans will know that Celestial isn't as bad as I make it out to be, but trust me, in the hands of Dragonon, it was barely doing more damage than the healers. But nobody, my friends, gets left behind. We suffered through it. Dragonon played untamed day in and day out, joining every single training session we had in his time zone. For the first time ever in our teaching guild, people started to complain. Oh... They started with the officers at first. 
one of the most hilariously frustrating ones was that Dragonan insists on learning Doom Greens, but he dies every time. He wasn't exaggerating, by the way. We checked the logs. They never got past the pre-event phase after two hours of non-blind progression. Because Dragonan was the first green and kept either dying or forgetting he had to go in it. <sighs> That's really sad. We took it all in stride. And remember our motto. No one gets left behind. But when uh, Then the people we were actually training, they started to complain. Sign up sheets in Discord went from 8 out of 10 players to 3 out of 10 after Dragonan's name appeared on the list. We were starting to kill our own guild by not leaving a player behind. Now, this wasn't anything new to us as a training guild. We have had noobs join us all the time and one of three things would happen. They either, one, get good, get promoted to a senior role or even an officer if they want, or two... Never get good. Stop playing with us after a few raids when they find out that maybe this isn't for them. Or three, get good in another aspect of the game that isn't raiding like open world metas where they run recruitment squads for the guild. Dragon didn't fit into these categories. After two months, we didn't think he would stop playing with us. And we had never kicked anyone. <laughs> oh no, he just won't go away. <laughs> He just won't go away. He must realize by now. He'll leave, right? He'll leave. It's gonna happen. He'll leave. Just give it a sec. He'll leave. <clears throat> Eventually, we decided it was time to go to leadership. I don't know what conversation they had, as I'm not part of the higher management of our training guild, where the founders of the guild sit upon their thrones, deciding policies, rules, and promotions, etc. But ultimately... The decision came from above to do nothing. No one gets left behind was the core foundation of the guild. They said that Dragonan was a valued member of the guild and we will not start leaving anyone behind now. Months passed. Dragonan has not gotten any better. I even I stepped in to help him to see what was going wrong. He would drop poisons on the group in Solasar every time he got them. Misclick the lamp on Kadeem. It's a rare occurrence if he manages to survive a boss kill. We even stopped giving him any responsibilities that we would normally assign to our trainees. Like Sabbath Cannons, Adina Pillars, Doom Greens. He would proceed to just fail them, so we just stopped giving them to him. You would think I'm embellishing details. I would love to link you the logs, as I find it so fascinating how someone could be so unteachable. But, obviously, this is anonymous, and you'll have to trust me. But then an opportunity. We saw a way. A light at the end of this tunnel. Our guild's anniversary was approaching. The leadership was, of course, excited. They were planning a big event spanning two weeks. Fashion contests, jumping puzzles, trivia competitions, and many more with prizes up for grabs. I inserted myself into the organization team, and they gladly welcomed me. Little did they know... I had an ulterior motive. I managed to convince them to add another event for a different game mode, PvP. They agreed, and I was given responsibility to organize it. I decided the day and time of the event. I decided who would be teamed up with whom. I decided the seeding, how eliminations worked, and that it would be a 2v2 team deathmatch. There were generous gold prizes, even to participants who didn't win. And many of the officers and members saw it as an easy way to dip everyone's toes in a different game mode than we already do in a safe and fun way. Sign-ups started filling up. 10, 15, 20 people joined in the tournament, all of varying skill and experience with PvP, from people who'd never touched it to the gods who I know lurked in our guild. But there was only one name I was looking out for. Where's my boy, Dragonan? And when his name appeared in that roster, the smile crept across my face. Time to get to work. Now, I ask your jury 
That's you guys, live audience. Sorry, YouTubers and Spotify listeners. You are not part of our jury. You can be, though. 4 p.m. GMT, Fridays. <clears throat> I wish for judgment. I confess my guilt, for I admit to being completely unethical in organizing this tournament. But I hope chat sees that this I did for the good of the guild. All right, Orianje. It was for the greater good. In my mind, I had to try. The guild was poisoned. It needed the anti-venom. The guild would have died under Dragonin. You see, I rigged the date and time of the tournament in order to fit Dragonin's scale. Sch schedule. Make it more likely that he would join. I studied his raiding patterns knowing he doesn't raid on weekends. I teamed him up with a dragon rank lurker with hundreds of hours in PvP. I seeded their team really high, saying all dragon ranks needed to be seeded so that everyone had a fair match at the start and didn't just get creamed. I was making the tournament fair. The day of the tournament came. It was an inconvenient... I, I, I mean, I'm just going to pause here for a sec. I totally thought he was going to pair him up with the Guildmaster. Right? So that Guildmaster would be in a position of... Oh, fuck. Because what you want is the Guildmaster to be going, I'm not playing with that guy. Right? And like, aha! You see? That's how we feel all the time. <clears throat> the day the tournament came, it was an inconvenient hour for me, but I took a day off work so I could watch. All in all, the event was pretty fun. People were placing wages on matches, good-natured track talkings, and rivalry sprouted. We even managed to get the attention of a big Guild Wars 2 PvP streamer who asked if they could spectate. Then, Dragonin's first match came up, and it went as I expected. Dragonin got carried by the Dragon Rank veteran and won. Dragonin was having the best time of his life. They lost some rounds, <clears throat> but ultimately won the match. One by one, Dragonin and the Dragon Rank beat everybody else to get into the finals there they faced a worthy opponent who also turned out to be another team similar to theirs a veteran who was one of our officers who played pvp for years and a newbie who had never pvp'd before the newbie was being coached on their build and gameplay as they went along it was a wholesome sight to see them climb the tournament ladder and the veteran constantly encouraging that newbie just as our guild inspired to be the match began and the first and second round went to our officer vet. It was a best of five. And it looked like Dragon and the Dragon Rank couldn't find an answer to the incoming damage from their opponent. Where they bursted down the Dragon Rank at the beginning of the fight. And with Dragonin helplessly watching. But on the third round, the Dragon swapped specs and bills to survive the onslaught. And took on a more supporting role with Dragonin doing DPS. And it worked. They managed to do the reverse sweep. With our officer not able to change up or adapt to the new plays. And so Dragonin and the Dragon Rank won the tournament. At the end of it, it worked. Dragonin became so hooked on PvP, he even joined at least two other PvP and World vs. World focused guilds. Because in Guild Wars 2, you could be in up to five guilds at a time. He had so much fun in that tournament, he never signed up to one of our raids again. It was like magic. From then on, we barely ever fucking heard from him. Except the other month when one of our officers said they saw him in World v. World and that he was pretty easy to kill. This is a big brain fucking play. This is genius. Not offensive. Didn't have to make him sad. Got him out of there. I don't know if he ever got better at PvP. All I know is he's not my guild's fucking problem anymore. <laughs> so I ask you, am I guilty? Did I do wrong? Innocence. Not guilty. I declare you not guilty. If you would have made him a burden on someone else's shoulders... And made him sad so that he got kicked. If you were making a classic drama time play to get him kicked, that would have been guilty. You gave him something else to play. He went. He had a great time. He's all smiles. Everyone else is all smiles. Not guilty. 
absolutely not guilty. I agree. Not guilty. And that does bring us to the end of drama for this week, but not the end of the stream, because we are heading into the Mega Dungeon in short notice, my friends. Round two of the Mega Dungeon. Full blind group, besides Noble Cheater. 